three, two, one. I think we are live. <laughs> live. Let's see. Oh, you all have your phones? Check to see whether or not you all have been tagged. You have yours? No. We are live. Okay. <laughs> and we are tagged. Okay. <laughs> Let me go get your phone so you can accept it. Christy, you might need to accept the tag. Okay. I, I have the tag accepting thing and I didn't need to accept Oh, you didn't need to accept? Okay. <laughs> Oh, you, well, to add, yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. So let me go grab it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what up, people? Hello. Hello, peeps. We are live. Okay. Okay. It's right on the couch. Make sure it's still running. I'll leave it on. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Janito Simon. What's up, Chris? Um, I see Christy has joined. <laughs> I'm waiting for the other Christy. We are here. I'm with the Christies. I've been blessed to be with my bestie Christy and her bestie Christy. Yes. Um, it's Kevin hey, Laura. And Christies. My sister is on. Um, and live. And we just want to, where's the camera? Where the green light is. Yes. My bestie Christy. Oops, sorry, sorry. Oh, but you have to cut it off too. Though. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we muted it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we are coming to you live. We're having a devotion here um, with the Christies, and we just wanted to come live. This is something that we haven't done before, and I'll probably do more of it. I was having a conversation. I was inspired because I was having a conversation with a gentleman earlier this week, and he talked about how just even one of the posts, um, I forget exactly which one it was, but it was something about... Um, the Lord, go to my Instagram, but it's on there. <laughs> um, all of them have been about the Lord lately, yeah. but um, he talked about how his uh, mother is going through some type of sickness and he's, uh, he was involved in some, you know, he's trying to get through alcoholism and, and everything else. So tough circumstances, but the single post just really impacted his life. Um, and so a lot of times we get on, hey, Laura, what's up? <laughs> um, Derek is on. Hey, Seth. A lot of times we get on social media and we talk about everything um, in the world. Um, and we're learning, I'm learning specifically to get back to promoting God and promoting faith um, and letting the main thing be the main thing. Um, Jesus said himself, he is life. Um, and if we can share that type of living water, with another brother and sister who's going through something, why not? Um, I wanna take this time to commend Christy Christy here. Um, they've been, since the top of this year, they've been consistent by way of posting every Thursday videos to really impact women. Um, and we're talking about women who've dealt with child loss, um, pregnancy loss, barrenness. Um, and so finding a way to really try to encourage your fellow man, your fellow sister, um, it's something that's imperative and we don't see too much of it. So if you all can shout out, um, follow Christy Christy. There should be a video on my page. Follow them, like, go to their YouTube page, hit like. Um, subscribe. Subscribe, hit the little bell, right, Christy, um, to follow. They're doing some, some really positive things. And I, I think um, you know, I'm shifting my trajectory in terms of how I use my social media. Um, so you'll see if you get tired of hearing about my faith, and about my God and everything that he's done for me and my family and my loved ones. This is the perfect time to sever your connections um, because you shall be inundated with everything good that God has done for me. God moves only. God moves only is the declaration for 2019. Um, and in everything that we do, we understand that it's in him we live and move and have our being. 
Um, I see Gia's on here. You all don't know her, but she is expecting a baby girl. Congratulations, <laughs> Gia. I saw the post earlier today. Um, our sister Fungi from Zimbabwe is on yes. as well. Um, did you all want to? Yeah. yeah. Do you all want to greet the people in the name of the Lord, the members of the jury, the people of God? Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> we're just joining in. Um, this is really Kevin's devotional, but we're, we're joining in um, to give our, our two cents. <laughs> yes, and we are glad to be here. Yes. Hello, guys. <laughs> glad to be here giving God all glory and honor yes. because that is why we do all things for the glory of God. So we hope that whatever is shared today, because we don't really have like a structured right. plan, <laughs> that you're blessed by it yes. and that we can learn from each other. Yes. Okay, so we want to jump right on in. Today we're going to talk about true prosperity. Um, and I'm going to ask, Christy has her Bible open, so if you can read this Christy with an I, not an <laughs> IE, um, if you can go to Genesis chapter 39. Um, see, um, and we just want to talk about true, true prosperity. A lot of times we may find ourselves trying to emulate um, people and we believe that they're successful, whether it's, you know, denoted by their social status, their wealth, money, 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 or their likes, their followers. Um, we may find ourselves emulating or supporting or celebrating um, a false sense of prosperity and success. So I want to talk about true prosperity um, and read just chapter 39, verse 1, 2, and 3. We're going to talk about Joseph. Okay, that's Genesis 39, verses 1 through 3. Yes. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the bodyguard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, so he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and how the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hand. So this is really important. Many of you all, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, uh, many of you all know the story of Joseph and understand that um, God gave him a dream and he had a couple of them and his big mouth self opened his mouth and told his siblings <laughs> um, and because of jealousy and because of, you know, he was his father's favorite. He had that coat of many colors. Um, they conspired against him, you know, um, and so sometimes it's important not to share, you know, unless you're led to share with some people. Not everyone will support God's vision for you and what he shared with you, but Joseph found himself in a pit and he found himself sold into slavery. And that's taking us right into chapter 39 there, where it talks about him being enslaved um, in Egypt, but also talks about how God was with him. And this version says that he was successful. Um, some versions say that he prospered. And it talks about that, how his master recognizes that God's hand was upon him and everything that he did with his hands prospered. Um, and so I wrestled with this a little bit because a lot, and I think a lot of us have the tendency to do this um, because his circumstances didn't indicate prosperity at all. There was nothing about his set of circumstances. The only thing he had going for him was a dream that he had some time ago. Um, but the Bible says that the Lord was with him and he prospered even as a slave. Um, and so I couldn't see the nexus between enslavement as well as prosperity. Um, and that's just in the, the, the carnal realm, but understanding that, and this is what I want to talk about, true prosperity is denoted by godly perspective and perseverance. Um, and so this is even before all of the other things that we know as prosperity, the, the wealth and everything else materializes in a form that everyone else understands. True prosperity is denoted by godly perspective and perseverance. And so Joseph is one that he just simply believed God. God showed up in a dream and, and showed him, you know, elevating at a point of time. And so he believed God so much so that he ran running his mouth, even his father, his parents, his siblings, who were older than him, um, 
you know, he went and shared, like, listen, one day I'm, I'm going to boss up, I'm going to level up, and, and God is going to do this in my life. And he believed God, and he shared that testimony, that story, that vision. And so we want to talk about how in our everyday a relationship with God, to believe God, you need a relationship with God. And so we're going to talk about one, godly perspective, as well as two, perseverance. And when you think about having a relationship with God, you understand that it is in God you live, you move, you have your being. It's, it's God moves only. Um, and being at a place where you can truly believe <coughs> who God is and believe what God said about you is where we need to be in order to, to, to walk in full prosperity. Um, and so Joseph made it there. Somebody else that we see who had that type of belief in God is Abraham. Um, we won't go through it, but a little before Joseph, we, we learned about Abraham and how God told him to pick up and leave your native land and go to the land that I will show you. Um, and I'll bless you. You'll be a father of many nations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and without even seeing the fruit of his faith, he continued to trust God. And the Bible tells us that Abraham moved from place to place as instructed, as the Lord led, but still he had no son. And um, somewhere around Genesis 15, God shows up in a dream to Abraham and said, I am your shield and your great reward. We were talking about this earlier. And, you know, trusting God doesn't mean that you don't have questions. Mm -hmm. And Abraham said, I hear you, but... And it's been a minute, his wife was barren, they had no children, they had no heir biologically. And he looked at God and he said, all of that sounds good, but who will be my heir? And God took him outside and said, look, if you can count the number of stars in the sky, that's your inheritance. That's the number of, of children, your offspring will be just that plentiful. Um, and the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was credit to him as righteousness. And if we can get in a place that we just believe God and what God said about us, a lot of times we are the Josephs in our lives. We're the ones that in elementary school, if we, you go back, we had the dream. And when we grow up, we're going to be X, Y, and Z. And we, we were full of, of dreams and full of vision and full of inspiration, but then life happens. Christy Christy happens, you know, the narrative there and, and things happen. And so we all go through layers of betrayal and layers of disappointment and layers of what appear to be fail failures um, and the pressures of life and then the trauma and deaths and lost ones, et cetera. And those things begin to chip at our faith. They chip at our relationship with God. We blame God. We turn our backs on God we begin to have a distorted view of who we are. A lot of times we blame ourselves. And so we begin to devalue our own capacity. Um, and so even after the L's that Abraham took, he continued to trust in God. And so I want you all to jump in and talk about, you know, what that means to you in terms of having a godly perspective despite your circumstances. You two have been through a lot. Um, we have as well. But what was it like to, you know, maybe even lose that perspective and have it restored? Um, well, I think for the, the main thing to keep in mind is just because God gave you a dream and a promise, he's not guaranteeing that the road to that dream or promise is going to be smooth Fast. or easy <laughs> and I think that sometimes we see the end result and we see what God has promised and we assume oh I'm about to be let's go lit yes. <laughs> and I'm about we're going over this and then we got roadblocks and then we got you know uh speed bumps and we got mountains to climb and we got car accidents right. and my car broke down right. and I ran out of gas right. and, you know so there are things that are going to happen along the road towards the promise, just like with Joseph, just like with Abraham, you know, that you're going to have to endure. And these things are not 
put in place to discourage you right. for you to say, okay, I'm going to give up now because this mountain is before me and I, I ain't trying to climb it sure. right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's for you to, you know, develop an endurance, develop a dependency on God right? Exactly. because it is that link to God. It is that link to the kingdom of God and his power and that source that is going to propel you to where he wants you to be. Because if you don't go through those roadblocks, if you don't go through those difficulties like Joseph and had to go through, who knows? If when he had that dream in the beginning, God immediately the next day, boom, you're you're right, up here. Right. Would he have had the humility the that he didn't have right. when he was boasting about those dreams right. and the character to be able to live out what God put in him? Sure. Right. So sometimes we go through what we go through to develop in us the character and the perseverance and that godly foundation so that when we get where God has promised, we can't right. fail. Right. Exactly. And so uh, just to piggyback off of that, um, that's that's exactly what it is. You know, we have to go through these trials and tribulations. You know, God never promised us that the road was going to be easy. You look at, you know, so many instances in the Bible. Um, like one of our favorite people um, <laughs> to study is Hannah. And you see, like, even like God closed up her womb. You look at Elizabeth, God closed up her womb and stuff. But they, they persevered through that and look at the the seed, you know, of, of, um, just their, their perseverance and, uh, praying to the Lord and believing and trusting in God. From Samuel um, to, yeah, to John Samuel the Baptist. to John the Baptist, you know, two of the most important people in the Bible, you know, outside of Jesus. Um, they, it, it just, it's one of those things that you, you, as a Christian, you just have to remember that things are going to happen and you just have to persevere through them and just not lose perspective of who God is in your life. Rely on your faith and, you know, who, who God told you that you are, who he called you to be um, throughout all of that. And, and that's key. Perseverance is key. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if we can maintain a godly perspective, mm-hmm. a perspective on who God is, um, and then persevere through some of the circumstances, we'll see the end. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Galatians 6, verse 9 that says, um, what does it say, babe? I know it's one of your favorite verses. I'm going to paraphrase. And be not weary in well-doing. And you'll reap if you mm-hmm. faint not. You know? so there's a, there's a harvest in due season. And due, due due season. season. Yes. You, you shall, shall reap, reap if you faint day. not. And that's in everything. Mm-hmm. That's in, you know, um, that's in life. That's in love. You know, be willing to allow a level of restoration Mm -hmm. in how you love and how you receive. Um, And so this is so awesome. I'm looking at the live right here and it's completely on a different segment. Oh yeah. Because you're over here laughing. (laughs) Uh, So let me flip that so I'm not distracted. But we see it in a lot of different other areas. I talked about Noah just recently and and, um, that relationship, relationship with God gives godly perspective. And a lot of times I feel as if, and we were talking about this earlier, a lot of the Christians, and I mean particularly in the U.S., um, and no slight on the U.S., um, but I don't find this issue with my my international brothers and sisters, but particularly in the U.S., we are big on quoting the um, fuzzy feel-good scriptures, um, the name it, claim it. Um, Wealth and riches is in my house. Let it manifest, you know. (laughs) You speak those things, and we're, we're so big on quoting those types of things. But those scriptures that talk about meditate on his word day and night, those scriptures that talk about, um, like even Enoch, he, he walked with God and he was not because, you know, God took him, that close relationship. When you look at um, even the story of like Noah, we understand that the Bible said that Noah was a righteous man, and he prospered in life because he was one, and he made it on that ark. And that's if you're inclined to believe um, those stories that are shared in the Bible. We believe that they're more than stories, they're history. Um, and if you're inclined to believe the same, you have to look at it. What, what qualified Noah for this um, heads up from God, one, and then to allow him to make it on this boat with his family? And we understand that the Bible said that Noah was righteous. And we may not know everything that made him righteous and what he did and what his his routine was on a daily basis with God. But one of the things that I just talked about recently, and it blessed me so much because as soon as Noah 
was allowed to leave that boat by God. The very first thing he did was build an altar and he sacrificed to the Lord. He worshiped, he sacrificed, he presented an offering to the Lord. So acknowledgement of God, we know is something that he had, that's, a, that's his character. Mm -hmm that there was destruction all around, floods of destruction literally took out family members, loved ones. Um, and people that I hold dear were touched by this. I was touched. My livelihood, everything that I knew, my connections, um, everything, everything that I felt like I had to hold on, all of that was destroyed by floods of destruction, not by the enemy, but by God. Mm -hmm. And so now with all of that being said, I have an opportunity to weep. Maybe he did that in his 40 days, <laughs> but um, I had an opportunity to, to really mope at the destruction that I can't even witness because the floods have washed those away. But no, the first thing that I'm gonna do is despite these circumstances, I'm gonna acknowledge God. And so we're talking about a relationship with God that transcends your circumstances. That's what we saw in Joseph. And so the Bible says, and I talked about this recently, that the aroma of that sacrifice went up as a pleasing aroma before the Lord. And because of that, Noah's worship, Noah's sacrifice, Noah's acknowledgement of God, God said, despite every inclination of man's heart being evil, I won't do this again. So he made a covenant not only with man, but he made a covenant with, him, with the earth mm -hmm. because of one man's righteousness, one man's acknowledgement of God. And so mm -hmm. if we were to acknowledge God in our lives, we look at Elijah. Elijah had the backing of God. Mm -hmm. But Elijah is the same one when God said, I want you to go ahead and go to the brook um, and you'll, you'll quench your thirst with the water from the brook and I'll send a raven to give you some scraps to eat. Mm -hmm. And he was like, that doesn't sound right, but yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. And so he had this allegiance to God, allegiance to the instructions of, from God, that whenever he decreed and declared something, it happened. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't have the backing spiritually that we think we have because we don't have the type of allegiance to God. We don't have, you know, so prosperity is about your godly perspective and who's on your team. And we want to tell you that if you have God on your team, there's no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. They shall be formed, mm -hmm. but whether or not they prosper is another thing. Joseph was taking through layers of betrayal and abuse from throwing him in the pit, stripping him of his coat, his, the thing that depicted favor that his father gave him, selling him into slavery, the conspiracy that went behind this, um, for him to get to a place where he's prospering and doing the things that the Lord called him to do is this allegiance to, I know who's on my team. Galatians, uh, Genesis chapter 39, verse two says, the Lord was with Joseph and so he prospered. The Lord was with Christy and Christy and so they prospered. The Lord is with you and so you shall you see. <laughs> yes. And so, but let that be your testimony. Um, for a very long time, I ran away from what I knew the Lord wanted to do in my life. Very long time. And I've gotten to a place where running from it isn't keeping me from the circumstances and experiences that I'm having. Um, but if I can depend on the Lord, if I can trust in the Lord and lean not to my own understanding, Amen. I believe that God will direct my path. Amen. Did you get anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, no, I think that's it. I yeah. think you guys got the <laughs> So that was all. God. Seek God. Like the Bible says, seek ye first yes. the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. and all things will be added unto you. So don't worry about the car. Don't worry about all of who's on Instagram flashing this and flashing that. A lot of those things are borrowed anyway. Focus <laughs> on the kingdom of God. Focus on the plans God has for you, the dream God has for you, no matter how crazy it seems. I am the queen of crazy dreams and having absolutely no plans and just being like, I don't know, God is going to let me know when I get there. Right. And people will look at me sideways like that doesn't make sense. But if God has given you a dream and God has given you a vision, 
stick to God, stick to his plan, stick to his will, stick to his law, and you can't fail. Good, good. And so, and that's key. This, this devotion is for someone like me. You know, this devotion, and this is why, you know, uh, we're, we're essentially sharing our devotion. Um, and so this was our quiet time, our alone time with God. Sometimes I'll do a post, um, and sometimes I keep it private, you know, mind your business. Um, <laughs> but we wanted to share because, um, you know, it's been declared even by our spiritual father, Prophet Ed Branson, um, a month of prosperity. And so everyone's looking for the car. Um, and everyone's looking for a, a ring and, and they're looking to prosper in, in a particular type of way. But few people are willing to run to the one who gives you the power mm -hmm. to get wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm here to encourage someone that has some deferred dreams. Um, those who've been hurt by trauma and, and those things seem to set you back. And we were talking about it earlier. It's just sometimes on your journey, they're, the unexpected can come and knock the wind straight out of you. And it's been done a lot of times for me. A lot of times when, as soon as I want to move forward in my relationship with God and what I know he called me to do, something will come and knock the wind out of me. And so if we can learn how to have complete allegiance to God and abandon even our own understanding, um, a lot of times we want that understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path and everything that you do acknowledge him. And our understanding, understanding of what we've been through, understanding of our loss, understanding of our pain, um, understanding of the trauma or the lack of understanding can really hold us back. Um, and it can begin to distort our visions of our own selves. We can begin to, um, our, our identity, and God can begin to crumble. But your greatest weapon, and that's why I like the scripture that says, let the mind that be in Christ be in us. Your understanding of who you are, the Bible says our, you know, people perish because of the lack of knowledge and lack of knowledge and understanding on who you are and who he is and who's on your team um, is key. I want someone out there to understand that your circumstances do not dictate your level of prosperity, your level of success. Your circumstances are just, you know, mile markers on your journey. Mm -hmm. And so like a Joseph, if you continue to push and you continue to persevere, if you continue to walk with God, you'll receive that type of revelation. Mm -hmm. And you'll also see the manifestations of the earthly, you know, the materialism and the elevation and the promotion, you'll see those things as well. But what's key, what truly denotes prosperity is godly perspective and perseverance. Um, so we thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we may do this again, or I may do it again in the future. Um, but thank you all for joining us. I see quite a few of you all have commented. Um, we miss you too, Fungai. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And your son as well, he's, he's asleep right now. Um, he was in warfare right before this video, but we, we laid him to rest. Um, so we, we, we encourage each and every one of you all. Some of you all, you may not see the level of prosperity that you want to see in your life. Um, but I can promise you this. If God is for you, no man can be against you. No door can be shut that God has opened. My brother just joined. Hey, Mark Asan. Um, he's the one that created the meme that's like right below this video. Um, he's my brother from another mother. Um, so I greet you. But I encourage each and every one of you all in this time, in this season, um, some of you all have walked away from the faith and some of you all have yet to experience my God. Um, at some point, I will testify um, the extent of our testimony and what the Lord has done and why we go hard um, as much as we do and we have no choice when God reveals himself and you taste and see that the Lord, that the Lord is good um, you have no no choice but to testify and so unfortunately there's so many of our brothers and sisters who don't understand this God and and haven't experienced God or haven't been aware to the hand of God 
moving in their lives as much as some of um, some of us who are completely sold out. But I encourage you all to seek God. Yes. Seek first the kingdom of God and watch things be multiplied and added to your life. Mm -hmm. um, so we say keep God first. God moves only. Um, and we're in this together. <laughs> yes. so, good. Yes. so see you all later. Love you. Bye-bye.